So I'm going to move on to the next phase of uh, testing with the uh, SA818. Uh, and as I mentioned, I want to have a look at the I2C signals that uh, the microcontroller on the board is sending to the RDA 1846 on the board. But what I th thought I'd first do is uh, create a uh, kind of a test setup so I can actually uh, look at or hear the signals coming in uh, from an uh, you know from an FM source. So so the way I've got that set up is um, I'm generating a uh, uh, um, 800 hertz signal from my uh, signal generator here at 0.3 volts peak to peak, and I'm sending that into the modulation interface of my other signal generator. So here's the uh, signal from the um, from the uh, from the Coolatron signal generator. Uh, so that's coming in. And now there's this modulation function here where I can configure an external FM, uh, external FM modulation source. This is the, uh, the deviation in kilohertz. And then this is the output frequency. Uh, so I'm going to get a one, uh, an FM signal modulated by that uh, source from the Coolatron uh, at 146.92. And the signal strength is uh, minus 70 dBm. So let's uh, turn the speaker up and you'll be able to hear that. So there's that tone. Um, let me just pan down to the signal generator here. So obviously as I adjust the tone frequency. And what we can also uh, have a look at is, uh, so that's right at minus 70 dBm at the moment. So let's uh, see the effect of uh, turning down the signal strength. So you can see at minus 120 dBm the, uh, the signal cuts out completely. You can still hear it a little bit uh, coming through the squelch every now and then. So that's the test setup um, with the um, with the signal generator. It means I don't have to wait for the weekly net on uh, 146.92. So uh, so that's going to be handy. Um, so next step, um, what I'm going to do is take this uh, fine enameled wire. I think this is uh, number 32 uh, number 32 wire, and I'm going to solder it to um, the uh, SA818 board. And let me just zoom in. Uh, see if I can see zoom that in to, so I can show you where I'm going to solder it in. So that's moving around a little bit, unfortunately. So on this board, I've identified this far right pin and the far left pin here on the microcontroller. Uh, that is the uh, let me get that out the way. So so the far left pin and the far right pin on the microcontroller. That's the SC, uh, SCL uh, and the SDA lines that go to the RDA 1846. So I was able to trace back uh, the RDA 1846, pins two and three are the SDA and SCL. I was able to trace that back to this pin here and this pin over here. So I'm gonna solder that enameled wire to those pins. That's gonna be a bit of an interesting solder job. And uh, once I've done that, I'll be able to uh, probe it with the uh, bus pirate that I have. But anyway, that's in uh, that's to come up next. So I've uh, attached the uh, enameled uh, the two pieces of enameled wire to to the, this pin and this pin of the uh, microcontroller. Uh, I've tested continuity and everything looks good. Uh, Real test is uh, to put it on the oscilloscope and to uh, confirm that I'm actually seeing I2C signals out of these two. Uh, so uh, this guy here is, according to uh, the traceback, this is the clock. And then this one here is the data. So I'm going to put that up on the oscilloscope and uh, probe around and uh, confirm that we're actually getting some I2C signals. So that took a bit of time to uh, get set up, but... Uh... Just to uh, um, just to explain again, so I've got channel two here, and that's uh, this channel here connected to the clock, and channel one is collect connected to the data line. So I've run that through. Let's just get this out of the way so we can see it. 
So here's just a sample of the uh, of the output here. Here's channel two, and that's obviously a that's obviously a clock line, and then here's channel one. That's a, a data line. So uh, so definitely um, seeing that. Let's just move about here, so we can see more of the the data stream. Um, so I've definitely got the uh, two right lines there. Um, what uh, will come next is I will hook up the uh, those same two lines to the uh, the bus pirate uh, I two C uh, interrogation um, uh, component that I have. Uh, so that's coming up next. Okay, so I'm ready to do some uh, decoding. Uh, I'd actually tried the bus pirate, and uh, for those of you who are interested in what that is. Um, this is it uh, in a little uh, 3D printed uh, holder. Uh, I actually tried the bus pirate on this, and I couldn't get anything uh, meaningful out of the uh, out of the output. Um, basically, this is an I2C sniffer, and it uh, uh, it will uh, it does work certainly, uh, but didn't work in this case. And I think the reason is is the um, this works reliably up to 50 kilohertz, um, and this is running at a higher speed than that. So. I actually have uh, another separate I2C sniffer, which is this I2C driver you can see down here. And it's got a little OLED on it. It actually hooks up to your computer. There's some software on the computer, which I'll show later. But uh, what, what it displays the I2C traffic on the, on the OLED here. And uh, just let me pan up uh, so I can show you the connections here. So uh, this is power, this is ground, this is data, and this is uh, the clock signal. Um, and with this I2C uh, driver, you can, you can listen to up to three independent uh, uh, devices. Uh, and you can actually power them from this and drive them from this too. So it's, it's a pretty cool little, uh, little device. Uh, I'll show you uh, the, the uh, GUI later on that you use to, uh, to, to drive this, and that'll be coming right up. So before I move to the um, uh, the, the GUI interface, uh, I just thought I'd show the um, the I two C drivers OLED and and what it displays. So I have, as I said, got it hooked up to the uh, SA eight one eight, and uh, so just some of the features here. So you can see here it's it's detected um, address seventy one, which is the address of the RDA eighteen forty six uh, IC on on the board. And it's displaying the traffic. Uh, now that traffic is uh, me resetting the um, the Arduino, which causes it to reissue the frequency and squelch command. So I'll just reset that right now, and you can see that uh, it has displayed some of the traffic there. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to scroll backwards and forwards here, um, so you can't really see all the traffic. But I can actually see some correct instructions there. This uh, 30. 40 AE instruction right here. So kind of a really cool little uh, little device and you can see it's showing the uh, uh, the SDA signal here, here and, the, and the clock below it. So uh, quite cool, but let me move on to the GUI and uh, we'll sh I'll show you how to capture traffic. So what I'm showing at the moment is the I2C driver's uh, user interface. Uh, now, um, this is all written in Python, and there's an API that's provided uh, that allows you to access the I2C driver um, board uh, using Python. I've been playing around with that a bit. Um, I don't know Python uh, that well, but, uh, but, but the, the API is pretty straightforward. So there's basically three modes on the board. There is the D mode, which I assume stands for display, but it's not really uh, it's not really captured anywhere. There's a monitor mode and there's a capture mode. So the, the display mode um, uh, allows you to uh, see what I2C devices are available on the on the bus, and it allows you with these two interfaces down here to be able to write and to read from the, those I2C devices. Now, monitor mode, uh, when you enable that, that uh, instructs the uh, OLED to display the I2C traffic. So we just saw that in the uh, in the previous section. And then capture mode allows you to uh, capture the I2C traffic and send it to a file. So they're the three modes. Now, one of the things about this that I've noticed is that you have to start the I2C driver software, the GUI, 
when the I2C driver board is connected, um, it has to be connected to a board that's powered up. So you have to have powered up the, the, the place that you're going to do the interrogation uh, first, uh, then you connect the I2C driver board, and then you start the GUI. If you start the GUI when the, when the, uh, the, the source board isn't powered up, uh, this uh, doesn't work. So anyway, uh, what we'll move on to next is uh, looking at capture mode. And what I'll do is I'll restart the um, uh, SA818 uh, board, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what traffic we get captured. Okay, so I'm about to uh, capture the traffic. Um, so what I do is you click on the capture mode. So you make sure monitor mode isn't selected. You click on capture mode. It'll prompt you for a uh, file name. So let's just call that C2 uh, and hit enter. And at this point, it's capturing everything. So I'll turn the, uh, the board off, turn it back on again, and wait a little bit. And then I'll click on capture again. And it'll just let me know that it's written it to the um, file. And move over here to the file. Should see C2 with some trap with some uh, content in it. And there it is right there. So, um, so this is basically what we've captured from the board. And uh, you know, I, I haven't done a full analysis of uh, of the traffic yet, uh, but I have seen some familiar uh, instructions. So this is. If you'll recall back to the um, uh, to the RDA software that I was originally trying to get working, uh, this is instruction 30, and this is inst instruction 30, and and the board starts up with uh, those two instructions. So that was in the original one. Um, however, as I look through the uh, as I look through the traffic here, there's a whole pile of register settings in here that are completely different from the um, uh, from the original RDA software, the C++ software that, I, that I'd shown before. Uh, some of the interesting differences are there's nowhere in this, uh, in this collection of code here that appears to be setting the crystal frequency, for example. Um, there is a 26 megahertz crystal uh, on the board, uh, but at no point in these instructions here is, uh, is there an instruction that tells the RDA 1846, uh, what the crystal frequency is. Um, so, so that's interesting. And also there's a whole pile of registers in here which are not documented in the RDA software at all. So this is part of the challenge. Um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, lack of documentation on this. So it's one of those things that it's difficult to know, uh, you know, how deep you're going to go into this. Um, particularly when you don't have the registers documented with the IC, it, it's it's going to be a challenge, but I, I think what I'll do is I'll probably wrap this uh, this video for the moment. I've kind of succeeded in what I want to do, which was to capture the I2C traffic from uh, the the SA818 board, um, and I've done that. Uh, what I might do next is actually uh, go back to my original board with just the RD1846 on it and replay this exact traffic against it and see if I get anywhere. Um, but that, that will be in a separate video. Um, uh, this is probably a wrap for now. Um, definitely, uh, I like the I2C driver. Um, there's a few little, few little bugs here and there, uh, but the, the actual board, the hardware is, uh, is amazing. Uh, I do wish it had a way of showing, of, of being able to scroll through the I2C traffic, and perhaps that's something the, uh, the author uh, we'll do in a later release. Um, I'll include a link both both to the I2C driver and the Bus Pirate uh, down below, so that you can uh, you can uh, have a look at those for yourself if you're interested. Um, but I think that's about a wrap for now. Uh, catch you later.